Welcome. Welcome to the University of Florida. I'm Rick Cates, and this video is beta testing a new studio. Behind me, actually, is a green screen. I'm actually in the School of Public Health and Health Professions, and this studio is designed to improve the delivery of instruction. This segment actually will set the stage for understanding the transformation of medicine and highlight some of the turning points, specifically what happened in the late 1800s to the early 1900s, as well as provides some additional videos which will facilitate your understanding of the material. I will frame up the topic starting in 1810 using Hans Roslin's video, 200 countries, 200 years in four minutes. Hans is a professor in global health from Sweden and uses a software called Gapminder to display his data. Your assignment prior to watching the Hans Rosling video is to watch the Koch, Lister, and Pasteur video, and it will help you understand the transformation of medicine as you watch the Hans Rosling video. And if you look at the image here in 1810, you can see that all the countries at that point in time were sick and poor, and the life expectancy was only 40 years. The book I use in several classes refers to this time frame as the pre-industrial area. Before I get started discussing specifics on the Hans Rosling video, let me first begin with an introduction of the College of Public Health and Health Professions. And since you're in that school, and regardless of your major, you need to know some of the history of the transformation of medicine. And without a doubt, one of the individuals that you need to know is John Snow, considered the one of the fathers of modern epidemiology, who figured out the cholera outbreak in London in 1854. Here's the story. John was a rebel. He challenged the then dominant theory of miasma, so that diseases such as cholera and the bubonic plague were caused by pollution and noxious form of bad air. So Snow was able to figure out, even before Pasteur's germ theory was discovered, he didn't understand how the disease was created or the mechanics behind the disease, but he was able to figure out how it spread. And through his epidemiological skills, he saved a lot of people. He was able to systematically make observations and discoveries of patterns of how the disease moved throughout Soho, London. And it helped him identify the famous Broad Street pump. So, he removed the handle from the pump, thus ending the cholera outbreak in, in Soho, London at that time. Continuing on in 1830, this is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And in America, a hospital was the last place you wanted to go. It was a dismal, rotten place, very primitive, not like Europe at the time. Uh, it was missing a inst institutional core. Medical education at that time was substandard. If you look at this final picture here, I mean, can you imagine being in a situation like that? So in 1850, things started to change and hospitals started to become more similar to what was happening in Europe. And in part, the AMA had, had something to do with that. Later on, yes, we had the Flexner Report where they evaluated specific medical educational facilities. But what happened was the AMA then started ranking medical educational facilities, which started to lead to teaching universities. And overall, the focus was on science. Later, then in 1860s, this is why I had you watch the video. This is when Koch and Lister and Pasteur came into play. And so Pasteur is the one behind the germ theory. In this image, Lister is spraying carbonic acid because he was able to figure out that carbonic acid stopped the spread of infection. So these gentlemen and people like John Snow and others is really what was transformed medicine at that time. And as you watch Hans Rosling's video, it just takes off after that point. And the nations during the Industrial Revolution get wealthier and healthier and the life expectancy increases. Notice at the top of Hans Rosling's video, you can see that the United States starts falling behind a little bit. And think about that. This would make for an excellent discussion question. 
Think about our discussions about chronic diseases and social determinants of health. The United States has fallen behind. Other industrial countries are having longer lifespans. And why is that? because their focus is on preventive measures and, and greater focus on primary care physicians. So I hope you enjoyed the videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next module.